Hello and welcome everyone to episode 113 of One Piece at a Time, the One Piece read-through podcast where we read and discuss five chapters of the One Piece manga each and every week. I'm your host, Derek Bittner, and I'm joined by my wonderful co-host and freelance letterer at Shonen Jump, Brandon Bovia. How you doing, Brandon? I'm doing pretty good. I'm, of course, uh, Brandon Bovia, letterer of uh, manga like Dragon Ball Super, Kaiju Number 8, and uh, many, many more. Man, I've got some... <laughs> I got a lot of uh, a lot of irons in the fire lately that I, I can't quite talk about yet, but the things it is kind of uh, it'll it's an exciting year for projects for me. So. Ooh, always uh, like to hear that. In, yeah. In the meantime, though, man, this <laughs> One Piece, man, this arc just keeps on giving. Doesn't it though? Like you want to talk about just desperate from the word go? <laughs> like, yeah. oh, oh my gosh. We get to see some power scaling. <laughs> yeah, we we sure do. Uh, but, and, but we also get just some more juicy lore and backstory, which I'm I'm always down for. It really oh, is. Just and like, wonderful I feel like character just like, moments, too. Yeah, I feel like just like last week, like like what I love about this arc is just how dense it is. Like it just it feels like there's so much going on at any one given point. There doesn't seem to be any moment where it's just like. All right, pick it up. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, yeah. I was thinking about that but before we get into things real proper. I was thinking about that last week, where I was like, because we we had kind of had our complaints, um, you know, like with Thriller Park and stuff. Like, you know, it was a little bit up and down at points. And I feel like even throughout all of the various arcs, you know, I feel like there there could be bits where we're just kind of like, ah, I don't know. But but like Saba Odi, this arc fires on all cylinders, like constantly. It is. I I feel like I don't really have any sort of complaints whatsoever. Like it's just. It's just been fire from the word go. I, I honestly can't think of any complaints. Like you might yeah. have a complaint about the flying fish riders, but they have served their purpose. Yeah, yeah. It's it, it's all all part of the greater plan. So it just it really is. I, I don't know, man. This this stuff is great. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. I'm I'm having a blast uh, reading through this again. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's get to it with uh, chapter 506, Roger and Rayleigh. And uh, <laughs> that's exciting on the, off the get go. Yeah. But before even any of that, we got our uh, CP9 update where Rob Lucci is out of the hospital and everybody's celebrating. Yeah, like, everybody's celebrating. Yeah. I, I, I didn't think they were that close, I'll be honest. <laughs> yeah, me neither. It's. Man, what what coworkers? But I guess they were, you know, they were undercover for years and years. So I guess even just by sheer amount of time, like yeah, right. I guess I guess they would be friends after all that's happened. Seems like it, and uh, it's you know get to see some different styles from them. And I don't know what it is, but I like the the designs of all these doctors. They're weird, yeah, they're all but very they goofy. <laughs> yeah, they 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 super work. <laughs> and, and there's something I, I just noticed like oh my goodness like uh Kubadori's, what do you what do you call that 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 he's wearing the, oh the, the oh, god my brain overalls overalls yeah yeah like <laughs> not a look i would have thought for for you know somebody based on like kabuki acting but like it kind of it, it's goofy in a really funny way yeah i mean he's he's still in the kabuki poses like he is he is yeah it is funny how the two biggest guys are the goofiest looking ones <laughs> yeah they live, they live that life oh yeah they do <laughs> But uh, into the chapter itself, uh, we've got Law trying to survive with all against all the Navy men. Uh, not having too much difficulty because Beppo, Beppo is uh, kicking all kinds of butt uh, because yeah. the bear is really quick. And I still have no idea whether that's a mask or not. No, no. He's a bear. <laughs> <laughs> that's just a straight up bear. I always thought he's it was a, a mask. It's just a straight up bear. <laughs> That yeah. is and wild. Well, yeah. I love the, the, the Marine. One of the Marines is like, how could a bear be talking? And he's just like, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's kind of sensitive. <laughs> so that's, that's his gimmick. Yeah. I mean, at least with Chopper, we have the human human fruit. I, what, what is Beppo's like, excuse? We'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. I yeah. guess so. We're, we're, I'm just going to assume at this point we're just going off of tech and logic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sure. Why not? Yeah. And I like how Beppo's like, I forget the guy's name, but it's like, yeah, you're new, so you're under me. He's like, I don't care. I'm not a slave. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think it's John Bart, I think. Yes, John Bart. You're right. You're right. Okay. That was yeah. it. And uh, as they're escaping, they spot Kid facing off against uh, Kuma, and uh, his crew's looking a little worse for the wear, I got to say. Yeah, they're not they're not holding up too well. Uh, and then it seems that the, the Kuma, you know, he, he kind of calls out to Tr Trafalgar Law. He's like, oh, so, you know, Law's like, you know my name. And then he shoots a laser beam. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was like, oh, oh, boy, more lasers from Kuma. That's 
that's not good. And uh, yeah, we, we we have this team up between Kid and Law as they take on Kuma. It's like, oh no, <laughs> this oh is, boy, yeah. This is we something. we saw what what he did to the Straw Hats. <laughs> it's just like, what are uh, let's see how these guys handle him. <laughs> that's mm, that's a good point. Man, God, God, I, I, with you pointing it out about Kid and his his mag, his magnetic powers and what's all the crap he gets on, like all the swords in there is like. Kid's kind of awesome with that devil fruit. Yeah, no, I I really think not not only is his power cool, but like it's the the amount of detail, the, like just how hard Oda goes on the detail. I think really sells it. Oh yeah, for sure. But we don't see how that turns out at all. Instead, we uh, see that uh, the Straw Hats found Peterman and beat the crap out of him, <laughs> <laughs> or maybe it was Duval who did that. I'm not sure. But uh, Duvall is still struggling to wink, and it's, I think it's getting worse. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's definitely not getting better. I love just, you know, Sanji saying, stop winking. <laughs> <laughs> Off they go, and they're even trying, still trying to figure out the name. Instead of the Rosie Life Riders, now they're going with Life is Rosie Riders. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which, you know, I, I, I can respect that. You know, this is, they're probably looking for the one that fits the best. Like, yeah, you, you kind of, they're, they're just, you know, figuring things out as they go along. Oh, yeah, for sure. But uh, they successfully, yeah. the sh- amazingly, we've got Law and Kid, like, just, b- you know, barely holding on against Kuma. Meanwhile, the the, the, the Straw Hats successfully made it back to Shackies, thanks to the the, the, the Fish Riders. It's like, yeah, so, wow. hey. <laughs> Making friends. There you go. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's when Luffy finds out that Rayleigh was the first mate on Gold Roger's ship. And uh, is like you didn't tell him. It's like no, they only needed the coating, so I didn't want to bother. And yeah, and I, it's kind of a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> kind of a thing to uh, kind of important information to just omit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I, I like how Rob is like, oh, you didn't realize. And uh, yeah, she would be the one to know. Nami's crying. It's like he's mentioned in so many books. And I love this with uh, freaking Brooke. I think there was a rookie by the name of Gold Roger. Maybe not. Eh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he doesn't care. <laughs> Which is, he's so he's just out of time completely. Mm-hmm. But we find out why Rayleigh is friends with uh, Hachi because he saved his life when he was lost at sea twenty years ago, even though he was still just a kid. And uh, they were really close until until Hachi joined the Sun Pirates and the, the Sun Pirates, and they're like, "Don't you mean Arlong?" And they just yeah. don't, <laughs> don't focus yep. on that. And you've been, nope, you've been trying on. to mention that sun tattoo. It's like, hmm, what are the yeah. sun pirates? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I find it funny that we finally were like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so. then get nothing out of it. Yeah. No, we, we won't for a while. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> mm. and, and Sanji's like, uh, so Roger was executed 22 years ago, but they didn't do the same to the first mate. Didn't the entire crew, uh, crew get captured? And uh, that's when Rayleigh reveals we didn't get yeah. captured. Roger turned himself in. It's the the government wanted to show off their power, so they just reported it as if they captured him. It's like, why do you do that? Well, yep. four years before the, his execution, Roger got uh, got afflicted by a terminal illness. There was nothing that there was a sickness that no one could treat, and uh, Roger was in a lot of pain. But thanks to Crocus, the lighthouse caretaker. Uh, he was also one of the best doctors. Excuse me. <laughs> exactly. Which we knew we said we knew that Crocus was on a pirate ship for a little while. There it is. Yeah. But because of Crocus, he was able to lessen the pain and actually join them as a uh, ship physician for their final voyage. And that's the crazy thing. In he knew. Th- he one. He knew. The other two. The other thing is that Roger became king of the pirates while terminally ill. Yes. <laughs> Three years later, while uh, prolonging Roger's life, they conquered the Grand Line. Yeah, and it wasn't until that point, like once they conquered the Grand Line, they started calling him the the Pirate King. Yeah, that's a cool detail to me. Is that Roger was dying? That's how strong this yes. man was. He was dying. Yes. And yeah. He, <laughs> and, and he became king of the pirates. Yeah, that that is an important detail I think to to keep in mind for way way later. But yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> he was a he was a dying man while while doing all of the things that he did. <laughs> mm-hmm. And of course, mention of Crocus is what gets Brooks' attention. Is like he was crewmates with the Pirate King. Uh, I was like, oh yeah, he was he was a ship doctor a few years ago, and they're like, oh he was he might have been searching for you. Yeah. <laughs> He's looking that... for a certain band of pirates. <laughs> yeah. So does that mean Laboon was with them too? I don't know i don't think yeah, so i wonder if he yeah hmm. 
Hmm. That's that's curious. But either way, yeah. No, it, it's it's fun. Again, I, I I talked about this before, but it's like the like Rogers era wasn't that long ago. So you have characters like Rayleigh, and you have folks like Crocus, who you know like they're they're old enough to be alive, and, and Garp even you know like they're old enough to still be alive, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's like it, th there's something about this era that feels legendary, but like still like there are still a lot of people who were there and, and a lot of those i guess like there's still a lot that is like influenced on uh current times mm -hmm, for sure it's fascinating just hearing Rayleigh talk you can just you get sucked in by his words and hearing of this yeah old era. yeah i love this stuff like he didn't care about the, the pirate king title but he loved doing flash and exciting things whether in banquets or battles he had a uh, plan but in no future but he enjoyed himself and that's when one day he gave the order to disband and everyone went their separate ways. He doesn't even know where they all went, but it, it seems like he became the Pirate King, conquered the Grand Line, and there's like, okay, we're done. Disband. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we split. <laughs> we comp accomplished this thing that I don't even know if they were setting out to accomplish. But uh, yeah. yeah, a year later, he re uh, turned himself in and uh, that's when he got pub publicly executed. But Rayleigh didn't go. It's also interesting that Roger just said, I won't die, partner. <laughs> yeah, that's what interesting final words. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Navy were like, well, this is going to be our show of force. But instead, Roger was able to start the great age of pirates. Yeah, yeah. It's just, <laughs> and, you know, that you, you get that whole scene from chapter one. And I just I love I, I love what what Rayleigh says here that, you know, you know, there was no other day I laughed as much or cried as much or drank as much. Our captain lived a wonderful life. Mm. I and also just, like the the symbolism here. He turned his own small flame of life into a bonfire that set the world on fire. Yeah. Yeah. It just I, I really do think that that's probably what he meant when he said that he won't die. Yeah. That is. Yeah. For sure. He somehow knew he was going to be able to kick this off. Exactly. You know, everybody's just sort of amazed. And Usopp's like, so Roger intentionally started the Age of Pirates. And Rayleigh's like, I'm, I don't know for sure yet, but Roger is dead. Those who create the times are always those who are living in the present. So, you know, I'm sure the ones that were present got something special from Roger. And you know what? That makes that opening sequence from the live actions so much more impactful, I think, where they actually show some of the characters you see that will be. I think so, too. Later. Yeah. That yeah, actually that adds like some a very deliberate there. choice. Yeah. I think so, yeah. Of course, Shanks was one of them. He's like, oh, you know Shanks? Uh, wait, you're from the New East Blue. So do you know a pirate named Buggy and Nami and <laughs> Zora? I love like their Buggy. reactions. Their, their, their faces are just, just like, ugh, Buggy. <laughs> <laughs> and like, yeah, those two were trainees on our ship. And like, they don't completely disregard, disregard Buggy. He's like, Shanks was on the Pirate King ship? He didn't tell you? Yeah. <laughs> oh, so can, can we double back to that one scene in like, oh my God, it was, it was like chapter 17 or 18, somewhere in the teens. There, there was that flashback uh, where Buggy was talking about how he got his devil fruit and why he hates Shanks. Uh -huh. uh, and there, there was that whole scene where they were having an argument. It's like, which one's colder, the North Pole or the South Pole? And then uh, you see some old man bop him on the head and say, like, stop arguing. You're both idiots. That was Rayleigh. <laughs> I, yeah, they did say that was the first mate. I didn't even put that two and two together with this because they did, he did yeah. say that was the first mate who said that. And now yeah, he's I the was, first mate. Oh, my God. I was specifically like, I was like, that's Roger's ship. They're on Roger's ship right now. <laughs> that's. I, 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 I obviously couldn't say that. <laughs> I completely blanked on that. That that was, that that was really in that moment. How different did he look? Do you remember? I think you can tell because I think the beard is in the same shape. Ah, okay. That's cool. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, <laughs> bring it back 500 chapters later. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he also goes he goes on to say that 10 years ago he met Shanks by chance on this on this on the archipelago. Uh noticed that his trademark straw hat and left arm were gone, so when he asked about it he's like, <laughs> "Hey, in the East Blue there's a kid saying the exact same thing as Captain Roger, the very same words the captain said." And it's oh, like, man. "Oh boy." Yeah, but uh, I feel I feel like that that definitely puts in the context why Shanks believes uh, in Luffy as much as he does. I yeah, I think so. I, there's definitely that spark and mm -hmm. before anybody even realized it. <laughs> but enough of those good vibes and good feelings with uh, learning about the Pirate King, because a battleship has arrived at the port 
and uh, these other pirates are just like, we got to get out of here. It's, it's far too soon. It's like, wait, there's something wrong with this one. And they, he sees that there's somebody riding on top of the cannonball that's being shot. And yep. we don't see his face, but it's just, this is Kizaru. I've arrived, so please yeah. respond accordingly. I just that shot of him landing on Saba Odi, just like mostly in shadow with this giant explosion behind him. <laughs> what a boss! While well, riding on a cannonball. Yeah. Good God, <laughs> these admirals are insane. <laughs> what an entrance! It's so good. Ah, you just love it. Let's just get right to it. Chapter five hundred seven. Kizaru arrives, and we got another full page spread. We got to turn it on our side to actually see all of it, though. I lo- this one. Lo- it looks like a movie poster almost. It really does. It. it, it- I kind of thought it was one. I was like, "Are we about to get to the next movie already?" But then, no. <laughs> <laughs> it does kind of properly show off each of the, uh, the crewmates. It makes them look pretty awesome, and it's, it, you know, it's- you got to appreciate the declaration of war. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's cool we begin off with Rayleigh saying well I shouldn't babble about things that Shanks didn't tell you about so uh, I'm just glad you're all here he he should be waiting for you in the new world and Luffy's just like yeah I can't wait to see him oh mm-hmm. so now we're talking about the coding so he's like alright you got you wanted the coding uh, it's really expensive but because you saved Hachi we're gonna you know, gonna wave the fee so uh, yeah 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 free stuff <laughs> yeah we're, we're just gonna get back we're just gonna get to that get you guys all set to go so uh, you know thanks for all that but before he leaves Robin actually approaches him and she's like <laughs> what is the will of D and I just I love that face from Rayleigh there he's, he's just like oh <laughs> I'm like and you see as a fan you see that you're like oh <laughs> yeah <Tell me. laughs> yeah this is when Robin relates you know the Pontoglyph on Sky Island had Roger's name written in the same ancient language how did he know that language do you know what happened to the world in the blank 100 years that, that started 900 years ago so it wasn't 800 it was 900 so the blank years happened yep. and then the world government was formed yes so hmm and he's like yeah, we know. We learned everything about that era. And that God, th- those that expression from Robin, I think, says it all. Where you can kind of like, you know, she's got like the like heartbeat thump sound effect where she's like, like it, it's a very rare kind of like shock, like, like, oh, God, you know, like this is everything that she's been living for. Mm-hmm. This is what she's been searching for to meet somebody like this and to know it all. And yeah. that's when Rayleigh just says, but don't get your help ahead of yourself. Take it one step at a time as you travel. It seems that we and those at Ohara were too hasty. Even if I told you everything in history right now, there's nothing you could do about about it. The answer you arrive at may be different from ours, even after you see the world in its entirety at your own pace. But if you still want to know, I'll tell you everything. And uh, that's when Robin's like, no, I'll pass. I'll continue on this journey. I love this because, well, for one, I, I can I can say, I think I can say pretty safely, we don't quite know what he means by this yet, hmm. still. That what whatever he they did learn, it's not the last we'll hear about. Like they were too hasty, we were too early, and whatever whatever it is that there's nothing that can be done about it. It it really like it's it's probably the biggest mystery <laughs> in the world of One Piece currently. What what is the One Piece? What is the Will of D? What is the Void Century? I think those are the yeah. three biggest mysteries in the in this series. Yeah, exactly, and it's like. I love it because it doesn't like the idea that Rayleigh could just say it right now, but that like, again, sort of implying like you might come to a different answer, you know, once you're done with your journey Mm -hmm. Um, and whatever that means. I like it so much because it doesn't undermine. It doesn't undermine the journey. It it doesn't. It's not like the answers are out there, but like, is it really like like, it, it seems like whatever, whatever this is all connected to, like it, it, it makes it feel very kind of personal, very like, you know, this is the choice that we made once we once we found out, and it, it seems like 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 you could e- extrapolate that whatever they learned about like the truth that Roger was like, all right, we're done. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it, you could definitely get that sense from it, but it, yeah, you're right. It doesn't negate the journey, and uh, you know the fact that they you know you don't feel disappointed that you don't learn this. Exactly. They, we were never gonna learn. <laughs> no, no, definitely not. But I think. And especially this next section we'll be going to talk about. This is Oda making a statement to me. Mm-hmm. 
we'll, we'll get to that. It is interesting how uh, Rayleigh goes on. It's like, Roger didn't actually decipher those writings. We are pirates. There are no, there is no way our intellects could match the Professor, you know, Professor Clover, Clover or the other scholars of O'Hara. He was able to hear the voices of all things in the world. That's all. That yeah, is a clue to his one. devil fruit, I think. Uh, well, maybe. <laughs> I, I mean, that's the only thing I can go on at this point. He was just naturally strong, and somehow the devil fruit he had allowed him to hear the world. To like, I don't know, the understand, understand fruit, <laughs> something like yeah. that, <laughs> like or the listen, listen flute fruit. Yeah, yeah, I can, I can definitely also there, there, the poneglyph thing has that. We'll have an explanation later. Okay, because uh, it, it's how, fascinating yeah, that because, he can't, he couldn't read it, but he could somehow understand it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, there, there, there is a little bit more to that that we'll we'll come back to in a bit, uh, in a bit, quote unquote. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it's these tiny details that I completely forgot yes. about, and it's yeah, it oh. makes you just as excited as the first time. Yeah, what I love here, we we have Usopp kind of playing the audience surrogate here, where you know, you know, he's just like, "Are you sure, Robin? Like, you might be passing up the biggest chance of your life." And then you no, know, he's just like, "Hey, I want to ask you something too. Is the One Piece really <laughs> at, the, at last the last island? island?" And that's when we get just a massive Usopp, and then yeah. Luffy's on the table, is like, "I don't want to hear where the treasure is. I don't know want to know if the treasure exists or not. I don't know for sure now, but everyone out there is risking their lives for it. But if A. Rayleigh tells us anything about it right now, I'll quit being a pirate. I'll never go on an adventure that isn't any fun. There it is. And Usopp's just like, yeah, I, I didn't mean to. I don't want to know about it. God, this is such an important scene. Yes, it absolutely is. Because this is Oda stating flat out through Luffy, our main character, that no matter what the One Piece is, it's not about what it is. It is the journey. Mm-hmm. It's the adventure to it. That yep. is the important part here. And to have just such a solid statement about it is really cool. I do think Oda has said in interviews at some point that like it's nothing dumb like the friends we made along the way. It's it's not it's not a conceptual like thing like that. But obviously the the adventure is more important than the treasure itself. Um, yes. And if anything, it sounds like the two might kind of be intrinsic, intrinsically tied to one another. Hmm. Just kind of given that, that that's my interpretation based on how what whatever it is, like the, con- the conclusion that Roger came to. Yeah. 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 Whew. And we get one final interesting interaction between Rayleigh and, and Luffy is like, do you think you can do it? The new world far surpasses even your wild, wildest imagination. The enemies will there will be strong, too. Do you think you can conquer such powerful oceans? And Luffy just says, I'm not going to conquer anything. The one who's the most free is the Pirate King. And that that reaction from Rayleigh says it all. Yeah. He just has that silent grin. That, that, yeah, he's just a, a little bit of a knowing smile. And that's the core concept of Luffy. He's he's it is it is about the adventure and being free. That is all yeah. that matters. Mm-hmm. Right here's the essence of Luffy, and is why he's yeah, such a exactly. wonderful character. So what's such a wonderful main character? Yeah, I, I think I think based on Rayleigh's reaction, you kind of get the sense that Roger probably said the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he just happened to do it. <laughs> if I had to guess, yeah, and even Shaki's impressed. So you know that's that's yep. fun. And uh, with that, he's like, all right, your ship was at Grove 41. I'll go by myself. But what are you guys going to do? The Admiral should already be here in the archipelago. We should probably go shopping, probably get out of your hair because we don't want them coming after you guys as well. So, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll just we sort of just hang out. And uh, that's when uh, Rayleigh's like, hey, Shaki, don't you have that one thing? He's like, well, I wanted to and I'll probably move the ship away from Grove 41. And he gives them his Viver card. Yep. So that way you could find him. And that's when we've learned the crazy thing about all this. The coding takes three days. Yep. Holy crap. They have to survive yeah. with an admiral on the island for three days. Yeah. <laughs> the, good luck. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very good luck. And they're basically like, well, let's go get some supplies for Fishman Island. And Cammy and uh, Hachi are staying behind with Shaki to stay safe. Uh, he's apolo- Hachi's still apologizing, but don't worry. If you mm-hmm. when you go to Fishman Island, I will guide you. So just watch Aww. out for the Navy for three days. Mm-hmm. You see all of them like take off, and uh, I, I like Frank even reflecting on this. Is like so that's a member of the crew of the Oro Jackson. 
Yes. One of the pirates Tom died for while defending his honor. It's like, I'm, I'm glad I got to meet him. Like, I like how they all have come with different perspectives. Perspectives. Like, he doesn't care about the pirate king. He cares about Tom and why. Yeah, what and Tom he cares, you know, like, accomplished. this is the the ship that made it across the world. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's cool to see all these different, all, all of the different Shaw hats kind of have their own different perspective on uh, what, what it's like meeting kind of a living legend for the first time. Yeah, it's all. It's interesting how Zoro is sort of nonchalant about the whole thing because you know this yeah. isn't his dream, so it's just sort of like it's neat, but it doesn't concern me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, over in Grove Twenty Seven, the pirates are rushing off as this marine ship has finally arrived, and Kizaru is of course there. The like we got to run, and another guy's like, no, no. I, if I get really lucky, I can ma- kill him and get really famous. Is like, no, you idiot, don't do that. And he shoots him. He's like. Wait, it just I, goes right through him. Yeah, we don't even notice. Like, there's not even any indication he got shot. Yeah, he's he seems to be smoldering a little bit at the head. He's he's just kind of like, uh. and we get to see Kizaru, which is his face reveal. <laughs> what an odd design, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, I guess since we've seen two of the three of them like formally on screen at this point, I think. I, I can say all of the admirals are all like their faces are all based on Japanese actors, like popular oh. Japanese actors. Oh, it, uh, his was the, seemed like the most obvious. Like he has to be based yeah. off. Like the only other thing I could think of is he kind of looks like Lupin the Third. Yeah, yeah, I can see it. Also interesting to note that uh, he, you know, because he's got the little intro box here. His real name is Borsellino. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. <laughs> yeah, he's just completely nonchalant. And he's just like, hey, I'm looking for a man named so Santomaru, Santomaru. Excuse me. Yeah. Yeah. One of my subordinates. And the pirates freak out and they just run away. He's like, oh, geez, I only asked you a question. And he just has this like flash of light from his foot. And all of a sudden, just a massive explosion where the pirates were completely yeah. obliterating Grove 27. Yes. Like the tree. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, good God. That is not good. <laughs> so is it safe to say that when we met. When we met Kuzan, when we met Aokiji, he was holding back, right? <laughs> yeah, okay. I think it's pretty evident at this point that Aokiji was holding back. Holy crap. Yeah. yeah. This is our first time. Just And I, I love, again, yeah, just how nonchalant he is. He's just kind of like, oh, okay. And then he just he just shoots. You know, he's got a flash of light off of his foot and kablam. He's just, all right, yeah. And he's like, I went a wee bit too far. <laughs> Oh my god. That's when we started seeing the the chaos going all over uh Yuruki Man Man Grove because yeah. uh we see them calling for reinforcements and we see one of the devil fruits where uh some of the navy men are old are old and some of them are like little kids and that turns out to be Bonnie's power. She's just laughing it up having a pizza. Yeah. <laughs> She's just it's, it's all good for her maybe. Huh. Makes me like I can't get the thought of like of uh, Zoro thinking a little kid when she rescued him. Yeah, I so you know what I'll save it. I wonder if it's because she's a bit shorter than we've seen, so I'm not 100 yeah. percent sure there. I'm I'm waffling on on whether or not I should say because it was kind of it was hard to see from the art, um, just from the way that Oda paneled it, and I think it was on purpose. Like the way that when when she swooped in to save Zoro, you couldn't really get a good shot of her. Mm-hmm. And so the fact that like, you know, Zora was like, oh, a little kid, like, I think it might have been because she was able to change her own size in a like if she can change other people's ages, she could probably change her own. Probably is what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. So but but it was it was weird because it was when she, when she did it with Zoro, it was like you couldn't really tell. Right. Yeah, yeah. It's it's very minor. We also see gang Beige. Uh, uh, so Beige. Beige. Thank you. I'm going to I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to. Yeah butcher these names <laughs> they're all they're all weird <laughs> yeah. yeah and he's just surrounded he's like eh, you all lose in terms of military power and we don't see anything from that it's just yeah kizaru coming up to hawkins being like uh hey i got something i want to ask you and it's like hawkins is like uh don't worry i'm not gonna die yeah he's also very nonchalant about <laughs> about beating an admiral <laughs> very much so and that's when the the straw hats get approached by somebody and we don't see it oh just, cliffhanger Yep, we don't see it. It's it's not Kizaru, and there's other navy men around. So maybe this is that Sentomaru that we've been seeing. Yeah, maybe we do have a SBS, and one of the interesting questions here is about Oda's assistants because they they said with other comics it's pretty obvious when drawings are done by the assistants, but I can't tell with One Piece even from the first volumes. Do you draw the sketches for everything? 
And Oda responds, so it's impossible for me to do everything. My staff draws the backgrounds for me. They look at my rough sketches and groundwork, then draw everything up very carefully. That My staff is really filled with great, many great people. The difference with other comics is probably that things like crowds, animals, smoke, clouds, oceans, and anything that lives and moves are all drawn, drawn by me. When you depend on other people to draw moving things, the presentation becomes a little off sometimes. A little awkward even. But with this, it's more like, so, like something that I refuse to let others do because I'm stubborn. So Oda putting in the work. <laughs> yeah. Oda putting in the work, but also, good Lord, I think because he has so many assistants doing just the backgrounds, I think that's why the background art in One Piece just look, it, it, God, especially later on, it gets really crazy detailed. Oh, yeah. If, if, yeah. If he's just, Oda's just doing all the characters himself, I guess that's all that the assistants need to do. Mm -hmm. But he's still doing all the crowds and stuff like that. So my God. Yeah, which is ridiculous yeah yeah he i wonder actually how much that has changed now given that oda you know takes more breaks and is more conscious of uh of his health and stuff you know so which good we want this yes. man to survive for as long as possible yes <laughs> please I, I i saw a stat that said that, that showed that manga creators i think have a i think it's 10 years less of a lifespan than most japanese people I would believe that. God, especially we're, we're losing so many great artists lately. So it, it yeah, no, the, mm. the, the, the burn and churn is super real. Oh, yeah, it is. Uh, well, here's hoping. But let's get to chapter 508, Island of Carnage. And boy, does that sound about right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, they decided to take it easy by going bowling. Yeah, <laughs> it seems also. I don't know what, what happened here that like did... Khalifa just has such a strong throwing arm that she just caused the bowling pins to explode. I, I'm going to guess yes. <laughs> yeah, it's incredible. Uh, I guess, yeah, that's, that's the only thing I can come up with. That's when uh, we go back into the chapter itself and we got all these men running around. It's like, we got an enemy attack. Prepare for battle. Arm the cannons. I love this opening sequence so much because it is, it is such good, just like good old fashioned comics. Because you're like, what in God's name is going on right now? Right, because you, yeah. you think it's something on the island itself. You see, this, the, the, like the stripe thing is like, oh, they're coming from one of the Yurukimon trees, and yeah. then you get horses coming out and all that stuff, and you, all of a sudden it goes. Then you get the the page turn, and they're firing at giant marines. It looks like, and then it goes outward. And it's coming out from Beige himself. Yeah. <laughs> the hell? Got, I completely forgot about this power. Yeah, he's got an entire cavalry inside of his body. <laughs> that shoot just, tiny cannonballs that grow into giant cannonballs, well, normal size cannonballs. Yeah, I think you're just seeing tons of like people in horses all just like flying out of his body. And it's, growing. It's, it's, it's incredible. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. It, it seems like this sort of like a... There's like a size distortion effect going on. <laughs> How somebody came up with the idea of this power, I'll ha I have no it's idea. It's awesome. It's one of my favorites. It's so memorable. And then, Kai, you even see one of uh, Beach's eyes has more people in it. <laughs> and he's just like, Godfather, it's getting really smoky in here. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's why they call him Gang Beige. So there yeah, you go. He's got, he's got the whole gang in him. <laughs> oh, my God. That yeah. I mean, when you see beige, it's like eh, he's sort of standard, you know. He doesn't. Right, stand yeah. Out. He just looks like he just looks like a normal mob boss. <laughs> like, yeah, he, he looks like he's from a different comic entirely. But then he gets that power, and it's like holy crap. Yeah. No. It's 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 genuinely cool. Mm hmm. And uh, then we move over to Grove Twenty Seven, where you know Kizaru's there. We see the the, the mangrove that's been destroyed because yep. of that. People are talking about the seven warlords are on the move as well. And that's when we see a Ar uh, yeah. I believe facing off against Kuma, hmm. which wasn't he fighting. Uh, he was fighting kid in law. Yeah. yeah. And you'd think so, if uh, that's kid interesting, in kid in law beat him, you know, he'd be a little bit worse for wear. or this indicates that kid in law are not in good shape right now. Yeah. When the, that is true. And also we, we have seen that uh, Kuma can teleport. So maybe that's what that is. Yeah, that's true. And a is already in rough shape. Kuma's also not talking a whole lot. He's just... Yeah. But over in Grove 24, Hawkins crew is like, Captain, please run. It's like, uh, and no, Hawkins just just doing a reading. It's like, so battle, chance of defeat, 100%. Flee, chance of success, 12%. Defend, avoidance rate, 76%. Uh, and that's when Kizaru's just like, hey, do you have a minute? 
<laughs> oh, also important to note, uh, Kizuru, he's tall. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> shot he of is. him looking down. I mean, uh, um, uh, uh, Hawkins is sitting down, but still. <laughs> yeah, even if Hawkins was standing up, he is like, yeah. massively tall. Good God. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if this is part of his devil fruit though, with Hawkins, with the, uh, with the how the cards are standing up and all that. I genuinely don't know. <laughs> oh wow! But I love how he's like survival chance of death zero percent, and he's like I don't and about the Sentomaru. I don't know anyone like that. Ask someone else. Well, if I can't find yeah. him, I know <laughs> I've got a lot of time. It's amazing that that Hawkins has the balls to tell an Avril to piss off. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Especially yeah. when he's like. Yeah, speed is weight. And when, have you ever been attacked at the, been kicked at the speed of light? And we don't have a confirmation, but it kind of seems like Kizaru is a light, light man. Yeah, he's, he seems to have some powers based on light. And you just see, you see Hawkins just go crashing into the wall. <laughs> <You're just> like, <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, that ain't good. There's just panic from everyone. Apu's watching, like, what is going on? Explosions are happening. It is just like everybody's trying to escape and nobody knows where these attacks are coming from or where they're catching on fire. It is mm -hmm. madness. And uh, Hawkins is okay. He's like, oh, you exceeded my expectations. And he starts having like voodoo dolls come out of his body. Like, what yeah, the hell? <laughs> And, and the way that he says only having 10 against an admiral could feel very unnerving as he has voodoo dolls popping out of his arm. That's another really just like kind of a kind of a disturbing devil fruit power. Yeah. It's like, would he, does that mean he would have died twice over if not for these these things? Like, I think so. I think that's the implication. I think <laughs> I think that's why he can kind of survive. But uh, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, here comes a Roge getting tossed uh, right, basically right next to them. Is like, yeah, uh, did not stand a chance against Kuba. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, and then I love uh, Roge. like, is that Kizaru? <laughs> <laughs> this is terrible luck. And Hawkins just like, nah, I don't, I don't see death creeping up on you. So I completely forgot we got to see all the uh, the, uh, the the supernovas fight the navy. Yes. Yeah, I completely forgot uh, this too. And I guess it, I guess it, it helps because we're kind of getting indications of all of their devil fruits uh if not you know not really outright confirmations but like we're all seeing them get to do something which like, yeah i don't know the first time i read one piece i i really had trouble with the supernovas because i was just like i can't who are these characters i'm gonna forget them and then i forget them and then when they were ever, whenever they would pop up again i was like oh yeah it's that guy i, I guess huh mm -hmm. I, I mean, it's also showing, like, this is the best of the Grand Line facing off mm -hmm. against the, the trials before the New World. And it's like, oh, they're struggling. <laughs> they're, yeah, yeah, no, they're they're all they're all getting kind of manhandled. <laughs> like, Bonnie and Beige seem to be doing okay, but they're only fighting regular Navy men. <laughs> the ones yeah, who are yeah, fighting exactly. Kizaru. Yeah, the ones who got unlucky. <laughs> not going so well. But, but hey, uh, fortunately, we got Diaz here taking yeah. down Kuma. It's just like a, uh, like a rapier and a... Uh, did it axe? Like, maybe like, like a mace, a... I think it was. Yeah. And then Aru stands up and just showing how bulky. Like, I think he bulked up. He is definitely bigger. Yeah, yeah, than yeah. He, he bulked before. up. Yeah, because he was about Kuma's size uh, when they first. The Kuma was bigger than him, actually. At least, at least uh, doubling back a couple pages. So yeah, now he's <laughs> just buffs up. <laughs> yeah, just like because that pillar he's holding is tiny now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, gosh. And Apu's still just observing. It's like uh, his crewmates are like, we should take this chance and run. And Apu's like, no, I, I want to keep watching. Yeah. <laughs> Bring out the popcorn, man. And that's when we see who the Straw Hats found. Kuma. <laughs> Kuma. <laughs> Another Kuma. <laughs> At that point, it's like, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what is happening here? Man, things are going from just questions on questions. You see, like, you see uh, this Kuma, like, take off his glove and then, you know, Sanji's like, there's a shockwave. Don't get hit. Turns out, no, it's a it's a beam instead. <laughs> <laughs> Robin's like, why is he back? And Zora's like that jerk. And yeah. and they're all just sort of freaking out. It's like I, he thought he finished this off and he's back because we found out we're still alive, which, you know, makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. But also, we're, he, again, like you like you said before, like he's not really saying much. No, he's he's not saying much, but it's also all the straw hats at pretty much best condition Fighting up against, minus, fighting against minus Zoro. Him. Minus Zoro. Zoro is not in the best shape, but uh, Frankie gets a coup de vent off and sends him flying back. So that's that's good. And 
uh, Luffy immediately goes into gear two. He's like, yeah, I got to go all out from the very start. <laughs> yep, no holding back. And uh, that's when Zoro notices something's weird here. There's something different about him last time. Or was this from last time? Was it, is it just my imagination? Yeah. And uh, <laughs> that's when I think we see, I think this is Suntor- Suntomaru. Uh, yeah. It's like, why isn't he contacting me? I better hurry or they'll finish them all, them all off. And I'm like, hmm, what's that all about? <laughs> Yeah. Also interesting that we saw Sintomaru um right at the start of Sabaudi. He was also just like kind of in shadow, like Oh Ugh. right, I forgot about that. Yeah. Huh. So funny that he's looking for Kizaru and, and Kizaru is looking for him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <Lost>. pretty much. <laughs> in our SPS we get some uh origins of our names. Basically this reader got everything right except for one. So Kid is based off, uh, it takes Eustace from the 13th century pirate monk Eustace. In the 17th, 17th century Scottish pirate William Kidd. Uh, Diaz Drake is from the uh, Francis Drake. Uh, Basil Hawkins is John Hawkins and uh, Basil Ringrose. Trafalgar Law is based on Edward, L- Edward Lowe. Jewelry Bonnie is based on Anne Bonnie, or takes their name from is the best way to put this. A Rouge mm-hmm. takes it from a Rouge Bar- Barbarossa, which made me perk up because of, you know, Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then Apu is from Chui Apu, from the, a Chinese pirate. The only one they mm-hmm. got wrong was Beige, which actually comes from American gangster Al Capone and the English privateer William De- Le Sauvage. Huh. And Killer is made up. <laughs> killer, yes. has no reason. killer Killer is killer. I think that Captain's was pretty only. obvious. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's really cool because it's only the names that we're taking, not the personalities. Yep, yep. But it's cool I, how we're getting more and more, uh, more and more pirates, sort of you know, based on real life pirates. Yeah, it it, it makes it fun for sure. Mm-hmm. But let's get to chapter five hundred and nine, Kizaru versus four captains. And, oh dear. Uh, yeah, but hey, uh, there's a, some kind of commotion in town while they're bowling, as as far as the. Uh, CP9. So I like how it looks like the the pigeons keeping watch. He looks he looks at very at attention. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. So and that's that's fun. But back to Grove Twelve. Uh, things are exploding, and uh, <laughs> have to just try to avoid as much as possible. Yeah, I love I love the 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 freaking the, the dive that Frankie Usopp and, and uh, Brooke have to do. They're just like, <laughs> they're all running <laughs> away from from the giant explosions. And they're just like, it's a beam, it's a beam, a beam is a light ray. Do you know how amazing it would be if a weapon a, a weapon like that would actually exist? And, uh, and, and Brooke was like, and they're like, what are you doing, Brooke? Oh, I'm playing dead. But everybody yeah. knows you're not dead. Yeah. Uh, but oh. hey, we've got an awesome bit here where Zoro, Luffy, and Sanji all go in with their big attacks and pound on Kuma and force him back. It's awesome. Yeah. It's cool. Like, because again, like, this is sort of a bit like, um, like the Oars fight, but it feels. Like like you said, like most of the straw hats are kind of at full power, and and they know from the start like Kuma is dangerous, so we're just like wasting no time. We got to go all in. <laughs> yeah, this this is about yeah. power more than size. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And Luffy's like talking to Zoro. Is like, are they that different? And Zaji's like, maybe they're twins. <laughs> yeah. and, and Zoro's like, no, whatever. The real one can warp and and will dodge attacks more often. Besides, he's not shooting shockwaves. And he doesn't have paws either. But even if he's a fake, he's a problem. So there's two of them, and they're both really strong. And we know from now, there might be three. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because we got the one with Wall and, and Kid. We yeah. got the one yep. with Rouge, and now we have the one with Straw Hats. And that's scary. Yes. And now, I, I props to a Rouge here with this next scene where he's, you know, he's like, he's bulking up. He's just going in with karmic punishment on this other kuma and he's just he's just going in and it's, yeah, it's kind of awesome to see the crap out of him it's it's it is very much awesome yeah well and then he gets shot by a laser beam and it's just take it out <laughs> yeah i mean he interestingly he uh seems to bulk up from taking damage so that's mm-hmm. an interesting power but uh yeah rouge is not doing so well i'd say he's probably getting the most beat oh, up. is a rouge a saiyan <laughs> <laughs> yeah hmm, that's a good question <laughs> <laughs> And this is when we finally get some details from Diaz because, well, he's a former Navy man. And so mm-hmm. he says, in addition to Bartholomew Kuma's, Kuma's body, you re- recreated Kizaru's attack power, Vegapunk. I didn't think the pacifistas had already come this far. So oh, there we go. They, yeah. Another creation by Vegapunk. 
and this is what the hell a pacifista is. What the hell? <laughs> yes. So basically, Kuma's body with uh, Kizuru's devil fruit, which is a horrifying combination. Yeah. How Vegapunk is such a mystery. I still have yes. no idea with Vegapunk, and like he will remain a mystery for a very long time. He just starts getting more and more references. Like the only time, yeah, because. The first time we got reference is like, oh, thanks to a scientist that learned how to feed devil fruit to inanimate objects. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, Kobe mentioned uh, back at the, the end of Inia's lobby, too. Yeah, yeah. Or the, the, the might have, I think that might have been the revealing that he was the one who had. So whatever Vegapunk is doing, he's doing all kinds of weird experiments with devil fruits. Yeah, he is which quite capable. It's fascinating that we, we kind of have like this scientific underbelly to like. Because we still have no idea really how devil fruits work, but here we have somebody kind of operating from the shadows, like yeah, you know, let, let's put some science juice in it and see what Pretty happens. Much. Uh, that's when the onlookers are like, "Oh crap!" Even three pirates with bounties over a hundred million can survive against a warlord and the navy admiral. We have to go. <laughs> <laughs> Get out. That's when Diaz is uh, like talks. To Kizaru is like, "Are you here for some recon, recon work on that?" And Kizaru's just like, eh, whatever. Go ahead and fight it. Whatever. <laughs> so, yeah. You know, if you, you, you know, despair at this all the more. So, yeah. And then suddenly we get to see uh, Diaz's, or at least a little bit of Diaz's power, where yeah. he looks to be a T-Rex man. I forgot about that. Yes, it's awesome. We just see it in shadow, but just that shot of him, like, biting Kuma's head. Uh, is just, like, of all the things, just, like, he's a... Uh, and as uh, Apu mentions, like it's a an- rare ancient species of the Zoan type. <laughs> that's amazing. We get a new Zoan. We type got dinosaurs frick- now. <laughs> got a freaking dinosaur. That's that's awesome. Yeah. Oh man. But then we got. <laughs> we got gotta love how Arouge is just like uh, just casually trying to casually observe again, and uh, mm-hmm. Kizaru is like, "Hey, I thought I told you I was here too." Kicks him in the so- side of the ribs and just sent him th- through four buildings. Yes. So I think this this Kizaru fellow might be a little dangerous. <laughs> yeah, he's a tad strong. And we yeah. even we got Hawkins doing his demon face deck, which turns him into like a voodoo doll. Which is so and he's even got like pins uh, in his fingers and stuff. It, oh man, it's it's all a of wild all look. of these devil fruits are so freaking cool, man. These uh, Oda knew what he was doing. He he was saving some of his coolest powers for these for the supernovas. Oh, for sure. And then Kizaru was just like, eh, poke your eyes. We'll just do the Three Stooges move, except we're going to, yeah. like, here's your solar <laughs> flare. Just concentrated. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Jeez. And, uh, and and Hawkins' crew is like, uh, this is bad. He can't take any more damage or he really will die. And Kizaru is ready to finish him off. But that's when Apu comes up and we get to see his long arms. And he starts just bopping his head, knocking it, tooting with his chin. They've got a real music man here as he's doing all his this. His body is so strange. He's playing pianos with his teeth. He turns his arm into a clarinet. Yeah. It is the weirdest looking thing. And they're just like, uh, hey, Scratch Slash, uh, hear my fight mu- my music. And he sends out uh, like a music wave that explodes Kizaru. <laughs> it's like, what yeah. the hell is and, his and, like, power? It like Scratch Slash like cuts his arm off. Yeah. Is he secretly the strongest one, or did he just catch him off guard? Who knows? I uh, hard to say, but I love how the boom even has like uh, music notes for its exclamations. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's fun. <laughs> oh goodness, we do have our SBS, but it's finally time for the actors to get in here and yeah. start answering questions. So that's that's exciting. First up is Mayumi Tanaka, and nothing yet. And I don't know if we get anything too interesting with this first bit, but you know. They're, he's, they're finally here, the voice actors. Yeah, I remember these being really fun. I don't know if there's any sort of like earth-shattering information in any of them, but you know they're they're all in on the bit. Just just nice, silly fun. Yeah, that's good to know. All right, our last chapter for the set: five ten Straw Hat Pirates versus War Machine. What so we're getting title. a Marvel crossover. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we, we see with the uh, CP9, we got the Candy Pirates at the St. Poplar Port. And uh, this poor dude has no chance. <laughs> like there's no threat here whatsoever. 
Yeah, no. Well, uh, the the villagers seem scared, but I, I think in the in the face of CP nine, they they probably got this. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. But uh, we begin with uh, yeah, Kizaru exploding, his arm flying off. Not only that, his whole like the whole top of his body <laughs> gets disconnected. <laughs> it's it's pretty wild, and yeah. everybody's just sort of observing, and he's like. Uh, you probably can't be called one of the greatest forces of the Navy headquarters. That that's all it take, takes to dock you out, and that's when uh, like, bye. Buzz, <laughs> but it's like, eh, I got to see cool things, so bye. And that's when, yeah, he has to be a light, light man with the way he just reforms his body. Which is a what a cool image. Just the way that it like it, it out of the way that yeah, his, his body is like reforming through light. It is it's so cool. Remember when fire seemed impossibly strong with Ace, and now we have light yeah. and dark men? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. How do you get any stronger than, than <laughs> the literal forces of light and darkness? I wonder. I, I do wonder what a fight between Blackbeard and Kizaru would be like. Yeah, that's a good question. Although, I don't know. Uh, uh, maybe questions for later. Uh, but, but, like, I don't understand how Blackbeard's dark, dark, or, like, how darkness equates to uh, basically, like disabling Devil Fruits entirely. So I wonder, I wonder how deep that goes. <laughs> I, I wonder if it's instead of darkness, it's more of a void, void fruit. That could be. It could be. That, true. that might be a bit more accurate to what it the con the concept. Yeah. Eh, we'll see. But uh, Kizaru's like, wow, that surprised me. And he uses his sacred Yata mirror, which bounce, yeah. reflects off all the windows to accurately hit. I know he doesn't accurately hit. He teleports. And just yes. knocks the hell out of Apu straight into a building. Like, oh, good God, these supernovas are just being dismantled. The way, I, th I think the scale of how strong uh, Kizaru is, is just like, it, it is it is kind of horrifying. <laughs> just the way we're seeing folks just get knocked through multiple buildings at any one time. Because again, yeah, he is light. He is the speed of light. Like, Yeah, <laughs> enough that he can just teleport in front of Diaz and knock him away as well. Come up yeah. on Hawkins and shoot him through an, an arrow through the, 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 the abdomen. And ready to finish him off when finally his uh, snail starts to ring. And, oh, it's this one. This is, this is, and I like how he says, oh, this is Borsalino. It doesn't say... Yeah. Uh, Kizaru, <laughs> Sentomaru is uh, giving you a tongue lashing. It's like, I knew you had the miniature transponder snail. Why didn't you contact me? You were using the black one, weren't you? <laughs> oh, this all happened just off of a miscommunication, basically. Yeah, it's, that's only yeah, for wiretaps. It's like, all right, we need to get to work. We found out who the culprits are. There's a Straw Hat, Luffy, Captain Kid, and Tra Traffic Guard Law, Law. So what should we go after first? It's like, oh. It, it's funny that Law and Kid got, uh, <laughs> got roped into this, too. I know. <laughs> so... The fact that these four aren't his targets probably just saved his life, even though he just took out all of them. Yeah. No, he... I, I, that, that's the power of an admiral, man. We, we just saw him take out four four people roughly on the same level as the, as Luffy. It really gives... It's like Remember womp, how womp. I said before, like it felt like the Straw Hats, even though they were still struggling bits in here, bits here and there, like they had kind of conquered the, 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 the Grand Line, they were used to it. Yeah. This is Oda's being like, yeah, this is the new no. world. <laughs> yeah. You're not ready. <laughs> not even. We're on the border. Like, we have the 11 best pi new newbies here, and you are just getting dis dismantled. Just done. Yeah. Yeah. Back to the Straw Hats, and Luffy's confused about why Zoro seems to be so hurt. Yeah. And, yeah, it's like, poor Zoro's still just trying to get back to this. Hasn't quite healed yet. Yeah. They're just trying to figure out what's going on. That he looks like one of the seven warlords, but what's going on? But time for the rest of the straw has to get in here with freaking Chopper coming in with his cloven cherry blossom blizzard knocking into Kuma, and then follow up by Frankie with his strong hammer to start boxing, and yep. uh, he gets knocked away with a single punch. But uh, Robin's able to catch him, and it's like, geez, he's strong in hand to hand combat as well. And Z here comes Brooke uh to stab him from uh, from above and it just comes to a complete stop and a, a giant blast starts coming out of kuma's mouth god again just like with oars like seeing the straw hats all kind of combo off of each other like this is so fun yeah usopp saving uh freaking brook with shooting into his mouth with the atlas comet and mm -hmm. uh hey something's wrong it's like would the bomb start start working on him all of a sudden well, one of them went in his mouth, so it must have short-circuited something. So his body may be hard, but his skin still bleeds. He's just like me. He's an ordinary human body modified to carry weapons. And that's when we got Robin here 
with the save as she's as he's about to as Kuma's about to blast Nami and she conks him on the head to do the like a make the blast happen in his mouth and sort of explode his head <laughs> to a degree. Yeah. <laughs> Except his head's still there. Makes me think of um Raccoon in DBZ. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> totally. Uh, yep, absolutely. <laughs> Uh, but Nami gets a hit in with the Thunderlands tempo and uh, they're, they're just they're getting him. They're, they're, they're really starting to wear him down. It's awesome to see that teamwork. But then he yeah. starts going berserk and just starts blasting everywhere. Starts just, just laser beams going everywhere. So we got Sanji coming in with his uh, flambe bar shot with the uh, Diable. Diable Jambe. They're basically using all their best moves. That was his yes. finishing move from Innis Lobby. Here comes Zoro's the Asura. Demon Nine Flash and Luffy with the Gum Gum Gigant Rifle. Yes. And I think with that, they actually defeated this Kuma. It was a group effort. <laughs> it took <laughs> all good. nine of them to finish good this thing Lord. off. Yeah. Just good the, uh, God. The concept that there are multiple Kumas running around uh, it doesn't. Doesn't instill me with a lot of confidence. <laughs> <laughs> One of the most terrifying warlords that yep. that we've had to fight, and there's multiple of them. Yeah. Oh yeah, god. No, it really, <laughs> it really starts. This whole thing is just like going from bad to worse, baby. And again, we've had a uh, like we got to hide for three days, and, <laughs> and it's been what <laughs> it's been an, like hour? an hour. <laughs> yeah. And it's just like, well. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh, oh yeah. Great set. Great set this week. <laughs> very much so uh we do do have some of those uh, questions for uh mayumi tanaka voice of luffy and they're asking like have you ever partied with the other straw hats i was like well we went to a takoyaki party in my training ho- room at home and uh there was some children's bedding in the room and the, the actor who f- does Usopp fell asleep in it he's a big pain in the butt <laughs> <laughs> i also like this is like when do you get when you get telemarketers on the phone do you talk to them in luffy's voice Oh, uh, once I was just talking normally in the telemarketer asked my mother and I shouted back at him, I am the mom. And he got freaked out. <laughs> <laughs> and I love that they actually have them like a, have, a, have a get hit by negative hollows. Like, I'm so sorry that a little old lady like me is doing the voice of Luffy. Like, Man. this is nothing compared to. Uh, <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm blanking on Goku's voice actress. Uh, Masako Nozawa. That's it. That's it. I mean, I'm yeah. pretty sure. I mean, obviously, Tanaka did the voice of, does the voice of Krillin. But uh, yeah. I don't know. I guess they're both getting up there. I don't. I honestly don't know how exactly how old each of them are, but uh, yeah, I'm not. I don't remember, uh, and especially considering this would have been like 2009, 2010, maybe. So mm-hmm. it's been ten <laughs> years a, since then. Good lord! And just like the chapters, I like to see the to see the the supernovas get involved, to see the strength of Kizaru to actually defeat a apparently weapon Kuma, <laughs> a yeah. pacifista Kuma. It's impossible it's to say what we're in for. Like this is yeah. this is a story of survival at this point. Yeah, it really is. It it really is just like the worst possible. And I get, I think what what hits me is how fast it all happened. <laughs> yeah, like it's yeah. been what this is our third, fourth, fourth if you count episode Duvall. one. Yeah, fourth if you count yeah. the all. Third, yeah, but. Good God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's not including all the, you know, we're, we got to talk about some of the Roger lore. <laughs> stuff yeah, like exactly. Like getting, getting all that, in, getting all that out of way at the start. And then it's like, all right, time for all hell to break loose. <laughs> Quite literally like, oh my God. Yeah. I, is... I am so excited to get beyond the go for the next set. Like just see absolutely how the heck they're going to survive for three days. Yeah. Also, Drake's a dinosaur. <laughs> yeah, and Drake's That's a awesome. dinosaur. You know, we got Hawkins. A, is a, we got Hawkins being a straw man. We got uh, D- uh, Diaz being a dinosaur. We got Beige being a freaking battleship, essentially. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> His own base. Yeah. All of their devil fruits are all so cool. Again, I I feel like we've we all kind of like th- throughout this podcast, you know, like yeah, every not every devil fruit is is cool. All all of the supernovas have cool devil fruits. They're all yeah. they're all amazing. <laughs> Absolutely agreed. So I'm just so happy to be talking about these. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
but with that, I believe we've said all we've wanted to say about chapters 506 to 500, 510 of One Piece. Thank you so much for listening, and you can find more of my ramblings and stream VODs over at BitNerd Games on YouTube or BitNerd with an underscore at the end on Twitter. And Brandon, where can everyone find you at? I'm at Brennabovia on Twitter talking about uh, anime, manga, games, and my job. And uh, yeah, nothing to promote this week. Just ready to come back next week and talk about more One Piece, man, because we are we are getting into it. Absolutely. I could, it'd be so easy to just like, let's read more chapters and talk more. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> I need I need to edit. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, but as you ha- if you'd like to help us out more, you can support the podcast over at patreon.com slash Derek Bittner. That's D-E-R-R-I-C-K-B-I-T-N-E-R to listen to the next episode ad-free three days early. And make sure to return next time as we discuss chapters 511 to 515 of One Piece. So until then, my friends, bye. Remember to take life one piece at a time. Old guy, I've got a question of my own. The treasure Roger talked about. The legendary One Piece. Tell me, is it really? That's enough!